Good morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters, and greetings to each of you in the name of God, who is the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of us all. I want to do something new here. I want to acknowledge formally that as a diocese, we live, work, and worship on the land and ancestral home of the Creek and Cherokee Native peoples. And so we give thanks for these brothers and sisters, and we pay homage uh, to them, and uh, we acknowledge their dignity, and uh, we commend and confer our respect. 2020 has distinguished itself in heartbreaking ways. The COVID pandemic rages on, and as of this morning, 243,000 Americans have died, with 8,655 of that number being our neighbors, friends, and family here in Georgia. The pandemic of racism continues to infect our lives and our institutions, our fellowship, and our democracy, and now is better televised than ever before. And then there is our political life. We have had a national election, and we think we have a president-elect, though things are not 100% settled at this time. Even as I speak, not very far from where I'm standing, men and women here in Georgia are feverishly counting and recounting votes to ensure that the people's will is made clear. They are deserving of our prayers. What we do know for certain, and vividly so, is that our country remains, as it was from its founding, divided. The good news, the redeeming news, the sustaining news is in this season, and in every season, God is still God. And the purposes of God have not changed with the pandemic, or with racism, or with political division. And therefore, the purposes of Christ's church have not changed. While it is true that our buildings await our return, the church is not closed, nor has it been closed. You can only close buildings. You cannot close church. Because church is water, and church is spirit, and church is heart, and church is people. The church is a living thing. The church, brothers and sisters, has been deployed over these last months. We have been deployed. And the definition of deployed means that we have moved into position for advancement. I want you to think about that for a minute. We have moved into position for advancement. Worship has not ceased. Worship has found its way into our living rooms and family rooms and into Zoom and to Facebook Live and pre-recorded bits, to podcasts and to long walks alone or with family. Worship has moved from pews to folding chairs, outdoors in small groups. Worship has moved into unfamiliar territory for many of us, and it has understandably disoriented many of us. Many feel a profound sense of legitimate loss and grief. But living beside that sense of loss and grief is also a sense of hope. Increasingly, more of us are discovering God's willingness to be met and adored in new ways over these eight months. Worship has been broadened and lengthened and deepened and enfleshed in new ways. And some of us have discovered anew, and some for the first time, the hidden treasures of the Bible, the hidden treasure of the Book of Common Prayer. The responsibility of worship leading has been taken up by many around the diocese, and thank God for that. Partners with skills and some who just have a can-do spirit have presented themselves as servants in this pinch. Thank God for you. All of us are televangelists now to varying degrees, and all of us have small churches now. And we should understand to a greater depth that all of us, all of us, are ministers of the gospel. Choir singing has been postponed, and for good reason. But singing continues in our hearts, and it sustains us. The Eucharist now is different, but it's still valid 
And it is a precious gift and a precious grace to us. Let me say here for the record how grateful I am to so many of you who have joined with me and others in doing the good, hard thing that we're doing, in making our love of neighbor real, by making sacrifices to keep one another safe. I remain proud of this diocese. If you don't hear me say anything else this morning, hear me say that. I remain proud of this diocese. Let me insert here just a, a personal privilege and let me tell you how well served this diocese is by a ragtag group of Christians known as the Bishop Staff. This is no hyperbole at all. I have an embarrassingly talented and committed group of partners in serving the Lord and serving you here in the Diocese of Atlanta. In this pandemic, they have done more than their jobs. They have shined. And their gifts and brilliance not only serves Middle and North Georgia well, but increasingly the Diocese of Atlanta is a resource and an inspiration to the entire Episcopal Church. I am deeply and personally grateful for their faithfulness and commitment to excellence and professionalism. The second group I want to thank by name is our COVID task force, Dr. Jody Guest, Caroline McGee, and our own Elisa Schuster-Weltner. They have and continue to serve with faithfulness and wisdom. I am deeply grateful for them and for their hard work in making data driven recommendations to me so that we can remain safe. It hasn't been easy thus far, but so many of you also have pitched in and have decided in new ways to live the words we pray. My sincere hope is that rather than just endure this season of disruption and disorientation, we might allow it to deepen our gratitude to God and our commitment to one another. Let me insert a word from the book of James here. James helps us now. He writes this, brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it joy because you know that the testing of your faith produces something. It produces endurance. So let endurance, he says, have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. What I want to say clearly to all of us is that God did not cause COVID-19, but God can use COVID-19. Another way to say that is when the church does what Jesus calls her to do and to be, she is still the most imperfect, perfect delivery system for the good news of Jesus Christ in calm and in chaos. You and I have been called, put together now in this season, to do all the good we can, by all the means we can, in all the ways we can, in all the places we can, at all the times we can, to all the people we can, for as long as we can. That is our call. Like Jesus' followers in ages and pandemics past, we are being called on now to adapt and to be faithful and to be fruitful. That the people of faith not yet born would look back at us here and now and be encouraged by what they see of us in these present trials. Above all, let me say, Jesus is still Lord. And what I hope you are sensing in new and clearer ways amidst all the ways the world is divided and even sometimes harsh is that Jesus is still the best hope of the world. What we know is that at major intersections, in major disruptions, those individuals and organizations that have a clear sense of their purpose not only endure, but they flourish. This is why Jesus began his ministry by recruiting his disciples based on purpose 
and not by perks. I fully expect the Episcopal Diocese of Atlanta to flourish, especially in this present season. I expect this because we have a clear sense of purpose in the Diocese of Atlanta. Our purpose remains clear. We challenge ourselves and the world to love like Jesus as we worship joyfully, serve compassionately, and grow spiritually. Nowhere do I read in our purpose statement a disclaimer where it says that in the event of adversity, all bets are off. What the Bible says is clear. Siblings are born for adversity. What I'm saying is, is that our present circumstances are perfect precondition for the true worshipers to worship in spirit and in truth and to demonstrate the spiritual maturity James speaks of. And we know, friends, what the marks of spiritual maturity are. They never change. They are patience and kindness and faith and generosity and hope and other centeredness, just to name a few. This is already happening across the Diocese of Atlanta in large and small ways. I see us lay and ordained congregations, Episcopal schools, and campus ministries doing our level best to bear witness to Jesus as Lord. I see us creating brave spaces to tell the truth in love about the ways we've hurt one another. I see this in the commitment of the wardens and the treasurers and the vestries who are leading in phenomenal ways. And let me thank you specifically. Thank you for the work that you're doing. Because of your generosity of spirit, we are able to keep our commitments to places like the Church of the Common Ground, to Emmaus House, to Holy Comforter, and the Absalom Jones Center for Racial Reconciliation and Healing. I see this in the Diocese of Atlanta when our congregations buy up medical debt of people they don't even know so that the burdens of the financially overburdened are made light. And I see this in our Episcopal school chaplains and on college campuses who are keeping the God conversation going with our young people at a time when depression and anxiety are taking them over and they want to abandon both the church and God. I see this in the commitment of our priests and deacons of the diocese who work and dream and plan and pray and laugh and weep in hopes that the church would be the place of believing and belonging for others that it has been for them. I have the good fortune of being the bishop of the Diocese of Atlanta, a diocese so active and so fruitful that I couldn't possibly list all the good that is being done and all the good that is being attempted undaunted by this pandemic. When I think about all of this and the season we find ourselves in with all of the hardship and all of the uncertainty and yet with a sense of possibility, my thoughts turn to a story that the great Howard Thurman used to tell. It's a story about his grandmother. His grandmother owned some land and there was a woman, a neighbor, who did not like the fact that Thurman's grandmother had become her neighbor. So this woman hatched a mean plan to show her disdain for Thurman's grandmother. And every day she would go out to her chicken coop and she would gather up all the manure, dumping it on Thurman's grandmother's land, on her tomatoes and on her greens and on everything that Thurman's grandmother was trying to grow in her garden. She wanted to destroy it and thereby discourage and demoralize Thurman's grandmother. But when Thurman's grandmother realized that all this manure was piling up and had destroyed everything she planted, she started going out early in the morning and taking the manure and mixing it with the soil as fertilizer. 
So the mean neighbor would dump at night and Thurman's grandmother would turn it over and mix it with the soil early in the morning. And this went on for some time until the neighbor eventually fell ill. And Thurman's grandmother noticed that no one came to visit her in her prolonged illness. So Thurman's grandmother went next door. She knocked on the door and this frail voice responded and came to the door. And the woman was completely shocked to see Thurman's grandmother standing there. In Thurman's grandmother's hand was a vase full of the most beautiful flowers that this woman had ever seen. And the woman was so deeply moved by this incredi incredibly kind gesture. Thurman's grandmother placed the flowers next to the woman and the woman said, I have never seen flowers as beautiful as these. Where did you get them? And Thurman's grandmother said, you helped me make these. Because when you were dumping in my yard, I decided to plant roses. Because when you were dumping in my yard, I decided to plant roses. You know, brothers and sisters, it is amazing what can blossom from manure. So let me leave you with three questions this morning. Number one, what are you planting in the soil that is COVID? What are you planting? Number two, what flowers do you intend to bring out of this soil? And number three, what do you want to give God as individuals, as congregations, in the next calendar year? This is my ninth address to annual council, and I remain convinced that God can do infinitely, abundantly, exceedingly more than we can ask or imagine according to the faith at work in us. Diocese of Atlanta, I'm proud of you.